it is, Game of Homies. Today, I'm going to share with you guys the story of my absolute worst experience trying to steal shit as a child, man. I had to be the absolute worst thief ever in the history of thievery itself. Like, I was that bad at it. See, as a child, I did not have a lot of money for all this extracurricular crap that a lot of families were getting for themselves. You know, brand new school clothes, televisions, video games, food. Maybe I exaggerate on the last one because we, we ate, but we didn't have money for stuff. So, the way 13-year-old me used to remedy this was I started to steal shit. Now, a lot of you may be saying, but Blast Miss HD, what would drive a grown-ass 13-year-old man to stealing shit? And I would like to reply to me saying that you are saying that by saying myself that ass catch him in all 140,000 or how many big-ass number of Pokemon there are nowadays is the reason I was stealing shit, okay? My mom had saved her butt off and got me a Game Boy Color one Christmas, and I loved the hell out of that thing. And the game that I loved to play the most was Pokemon Red and Blue, man. I spent so many childhood hours trying to evolve my Charmeleon to Charizard. To know how long I spent trying to find rare candies? And don't even get me started on Mewtwo. All right, I found all 150 Pokemon, the original ones, all of them shits. This feat would not be reachable without a large amount of hours as far as investments. Hours that needed battery life. Battery life that I could not afford to sustain, man. Back in Cleveland, Ohio, the biggest store anywhere was Kmart. And I used to go to Kmart Frequently, not only did I need to get batteries from a Game Boy, but I usually don't like to admit really personal stuff in my stories, okay? But as a child, I had a substance abuse problem, okay? I usually don't like to tell people stuff like that, alright? But I swear to God, there was something that they put in that tropical flavored bubblicious chewing gum. Man, when I didn't have it for long enough, I start scratching my neck. My lips would get ashy. <laughs> I think I'm going to edit that out. That's, that's a horrible joke. <laughs> that was a horrible joke. But, but you get my drift, right? I loved that shit. I remember the best thing that ever happened to me in my thievery days was my huge ass winter coat. Because back then, when I would go into the stores, I would just take as much stuff as I could and shove it into my pockets and wait around long enough to hope that the radar would fall off of me, which is stupid. Because the longer you stay, the more probability it is you're going to get busted. And then I walk out. What I would do with this coat was, one of my pockets, I took a knife and I sliced the inside of that pocket. So that way, whenever I would pack it full of stolen items, they would fall through the pocket and into the innards of my coat and into places, hopefully, where the other people wouldn't check. Okay, and then that worked a couple times. All right, so this day in question, now I go to Kmart, man, I ran out of batteries. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna take enough juice, get it? Batteries, <laughs> juice, <laughs> okay. So I don't have to come back and pillage for a while. My plan was airtight. I go into Kmart, right? I case the joint. Now, anyone who's ever stolen things from any of these department stores knows that the scariest part is the detector at the front of the store that you gotta walk through to get in and out. Dude, I used to be so nervous whenever I was stealing shit that I used to think that the detector would go off on me on the way in. So after I finally get through the metal detectors and my heart is back to beating at normal pace, I go to the front of the aisle where you're supposed to check out at. I straight up lift like four or five packs of tropical flavor bubblicious. See, this is how horrible of a thief I was. Okay, whenever I was gonna steal some shit, I would pick it up and look at it and go over it for like 
10, 15 minutes and then act like I was putting it back down because somehow 49 cents is far out of my price range. <laughs> because it was. I was I was a poor child. So I would act like I was putting it back down, but I would shove it into my pockets, right? And then I would go back and get all the batteries. Now this day in particular, I had already cased the joint son. I was it was like Grand Theft Auto 5 bank robbery status off up in that mug. I went back and already disclosed the location I would be stealing these items in. Alright, and I had picked the lunch pail aisle. Don't ask me why Kmart has a lunch pail aisle. They're out of business. So apparently, that's not a good aisle to have. <laughs> but they had a lunch pail aisle. I think it was close to, to when kids were going back to school. This is why they had that. I took all of the batteries and all the gum out of my pockets and I put them behind the lunch pails. While they were behind the lunch pails, that's when I would take all the wrapping off of the gum. Because in my mind, I thought that if you took all of the wrapper that had the barcodes off the gum and everything, just just the pieces individual, and stuck those in your pocket, then the alarm wouldn't go off on you. Which I still till this day don't know if that's 100% accurate. So, after I got all the gum unraveled, I shoved that in my pocket, I took the batteries out, and I would go and I would get one of their little disposable knives that they kept in the hardware section, and I would take that and use that to cut into the battery thing, and open it up, and get all the batteries out, like 35 batteries. I was balling in Game Boy Color juice, okay, because it's, it's batteries, when you charge something, you give it juice, okay. So anyway, I take all the individual batteries and all the gum and I shove that in the, into the pocket with the hole at the bottom of it and wiggle around a little bit so all the stuff can fall through the hole and go into the other parts of my jacket, right? I take all of the battery wrappings and all of the gum wrappings and I stick it in this lunch pail. And then I close that up, put it back on the aisle in perfect position like it's never been touched and I walk away. Do you guys remember when I told y'all I was was the worst thief in all of history of thievery? I don't know why I thought this, but for some reason, in 13-year-old Blasphemous HD's mind, when you steal some shit, you loiter around the area inside the store for like 30, 40, sometimes even as long as two hours. Okay, because the longer you stay around this area, the less suspicious you look. At least that is what I thought. I was not a smart child. <laughs> I can hear I can hear you guys judging me while you're listening to this. <laughs> So, I'll never forget this. About 20 minutes later, I'm over in the magazine aisle reading the GamePro magazines, trying to get the cheat codes out the back of it, and as my eyes are drilled into this game magazine, I hear a thud at my feet. Of course, my eyes fixate on where the sound came from, and I see the lunch pail at my feet, and it's opened up, and it's got the wrappers of the batteries and the wrappers of the gum just all over it. I'm just sitting there like, oh my god, what the, what the fuck? I look up in time to see this precarious looking dude in like a full on trench coat and a hat and glasses walking in the other direction. This dude just did the swoop and drop. Oh my god, dude. I remember how scared I was like, can you imagine how scared 13 year old me was. I lost all concepts of time, reality, and space, dude. Imagine that you just got done robbing a bank, okay? You got away Scott clean. And as you're sitting down, chilling at a McDonald's, someone walks past you and drops the mask in front of you that you were wearing while you robbed the bank and keeps walking off. You gonna shit yourself. In my mind, I didn't have a lot of fucking time, right? Now, I knew that this dude was a somebody. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know if it was the CIA or the FBI because I remember back then, like on the pillowcases, they used to have that tag that said if you remove them, you go to federal prison. So I didn't, I didn't know if this was on that level or what, man. But I just knew I had to let this person know that I was putting everything back. So I took all of the batteries, all of the gum, every fucking thing, and I went back to the front and I, I just, I just put that shit right 
in the freaking aisle somewhere. I just put that shit back. I walk out the front door. Dude, I've never been so nervous or scared in my young 13-year-old grown man life, man. I... <laughs> I walk out the front door, I'm just shitting all over the hard tile on the way out. And even though I dropped the gum, I just figured I was done. I was a made man. Like, any minute now, cops are gonna swoop in, they're gonna have helicopters, dogs, pumas, you know. Someone's gonna jump out of a tree, they're gonna have to catch a predator in my ass, man. Was, to my sheer amazement, not only did the detector thing not go off, but... Nothing happened. I walked through and, and shit was cool. Like, I never breathed a more peaceful sigh of relief in my life. I'm walking through the parking lot and it was just a high that you got whenever you got away with some shit, right? So to me, even though I didn't get the batteries, I just escaped this place with my fucking life. And I'm just like, oh my god, I can't believe that I didn't get shot or, or at least tasered. Like, whoo, man. Life is good. I, I am a bad bitch. You know, they'll know this is the day that they almost caught Blasphemous HD. And right on the end cusp of me thinking that shit, I hear some noise behind me that is getting progressively louder. Now I'm still halfway on high alert from just now robbing this candy store for like seven dollars worth the goods. So I turn around, man, and I see the biggest white person I have ever seen in my life running towards me for everything that he is worth, man. I mean, this man was putting everything he had into that full-on run that he was doing towards me, man. Like, if you saw the expression on this man's face, you would think he is running for the game-winning touchdown. The sheer emotion on this man's face was enough to scare the living Jesus out of me, I turn around and try to run. This dude had to be like six foot fucking five and 250 fucking pounds. What the fuck was he doing? This freaked me out so bad shit went into slow motion. You would think that this was Max Payne off up in this bitch. I try to break into a sprint and run away. Like, unfortunately for me, the burst of speed that I got from my sprint to try to get a running start away from this dude was nowhere near as fast as this man's full-on fucking run, all right? When he caught me, this man did not only catch me. Oh, no. He full-on Goldberg speared the fuck out of my 13-year-old ass face first into the fucking snow and rocks and fucking pavement. Honestly, I was like a hundred and fucking ten pounds, man. If not a whole lot fucking less. I was like five foot five or some shit, right? <laughs> like, apparently this motherfucker overestimated my size based on my big ass fucking trench coat and figured he had to near on kill me just to take me down. Now, when I woke back the fuck up, cause I'm pretty sure I was out for a couple of fucking seconds, this motherfucker's got me face first on the snowy pavement and he's got me hog tied in handcuffs and shit. This motherfucker picks me up with one hand because he's fucking huge and fucking drags me back to the fucking store. This video ran on for a lot longer than I thought it would. If you would like to hear the rest of this story, click the screen. Trust me, as usual, it gets a whole lot freaking worse. <laughs> it, it does though.